We're starting off here with a bag with red balls and white balls. And what we're going to do here is five times we're going to reach into that bag, pull out a ball, write down its color, put the ball back in the bag. That's what the width replacement means. Now the probability of getting exactly three red balls is 32 times the probability of getting exactly one red ball. And we want to figure out what percent of the balls originally in the bag are red. We're basically given an equation here with these probabilities, so we know what we want to do. We want to write expressions for the probability of getting exactly three red balls and the probability of getting exactly one red ball. Set those equal to each other, and hopefully we can solve for what we're looking for. Of course, we need a variable for what we're looking for. The percentage of the balls originally in the bag that are red, well, that's just the probability of if you reach in the bag, pull out one ball, you get a red ball. We're going to call that P. That's the probability of getting a single red ball if you just reach in the bag once and pull out a ball. Of course, all the other balls that aren't red, those are white. So 1 minus P is the probability of getting a white ball. Now we just have to write those expressions. One for exactly three red balls, one for exactly one red ball. We'll start off with the three. That means we have two white balls. So we have two white and three red. And we want to write a probability that we'll get two white and three red. Well, we'll start off just by thinking about a single sequence, a single possibility here of two white and three red. Now, one possibility is just to pull the two whites out first and then the three reds. Now, what's the probability of getting exactly this sequence? Well, the probability of getting this first ball white is 1 minus p. It's the same as the second. Again, we're doing this with, with replacement. Put the ball back in. So, probability of getting the first one white is 1 minus p. Probability of getting the second one white is also 1 minus p. Put those together. That gives us a factor of 1 minus p squared. Probability of getting the third ball red is p. Fourth ball p. Fifth ball p. Get a factor of p for each one of these red balls. That gives us a PQ. So the probability of getting exactly this sequence is 1 minus P squared times P cubed. Of course, this isn't the only way we can have two whites and three reds. Check this out. I can flip these two around. And I can go white, red, white, red, red. What's the probability of getting exactly this sequence? Well, once again, we have 1 minus p for the white, 1 minus p for this white. That gives us two factors of 1 minus p, and then a factor of p for each of the red balls. That gives us p cubed again. So, I mean, no matter what the order is here, we're going to have two whites and three reds. We're going to have two factors of 1 minus p, three factors of p. So to find the total probability of all the ways you can get two white and three red, we just have to count the number of ways to have two whites out of the five balls. Because for each one of those sequences, this is going to be our probability. So we'll just count up how many there are and then multiply that number by this. Well, one way to think about how many there are is to imagine we have five blanks here. And we're just going to drop two white balls into those five blanks, put the three reds in the other blanks. So we don't even care about the red balls for now. We'll just count the number of ways we can put the two white balls in there. The reds will just go in the other slots. We start from the beginning, just the first two slots. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Then we can move on to when the first white ball is in the second slot. There's five, there's six, there's seven. There's got to be a faster way to do this, or at the very least, a smarter way to do this. There's eight, there's nine, Whew, there's ten. So there's ten ways to put two white balls in these five slots. So we take that 10 and we multiply that because for each one of those 10 ways, this is the probability of getting those two white balls in those two slots and three reds in the other slots. So this is the total probability for having two whites and three reds. Fortunately, dealing with four white and one red is a little bit easier. Again, we have five slots and here we're going to stick in four whites and three red and one red. For each one of the whites, of course, we have a factor of one minus p in our probability. There are four of them. And then we have a single factor of p for the red ball. Now, we have to multiply by the number of ways we can have four whites and one red. Of course, there are just five ways to put in that one red. 
So that gives us a total probability of 5 times this expression. For each one of those ways we can put that one red in here, there's our probability. There are five ways to put the red ball in one of these slots. Now we can write our equation. We know that this probability is 32 times this, so we have, an, we have our equation. We have 10 times 1 minus p squared times p cubed is 32 times this other probability we have. Now, at first glance, this is a terrifying equation. But we can simplify a lot here. We can divide both sides by p. We get a p squared over here. Divide both sides by 10. 32 times 5 is 160. Divide that by 10, we get 16. And we can divide both sides by the square of 1 minus p. We'll be left with the 1 minus p squared over there. Now we see a bunch of squares. We'll take the square root of both sides, because we know p is positive and 1 minus p is positive. We take the square root, we get p equals 4 times 1 minus p. Expand that to 4 minus 4p. Four and now we have 5p equals 4. So p is 4 fifths. Of course, 4 fifths. Go back, read the question. We want a percent. Is 80%. All right, we got that down. Now, I still think there's a faster way to figure out that there were 10 ways to get two whites and three reds, but running short on time. We need to move on to the next problem. All right, got another bag. This time all we got marbles instead of balls, and we've got, we've got 10 marbles in three colors. Five red, three blue, two green, and we're going to pull six marbles out, and each time we're going to put it back in, just like we did before, and we want the probability that we get two of each color. Ah. All right, well, we'll think about it the same way we did before. We'll think about one particular sequence, one particular, one particular order. So we'll think of it as red, red, green. Now let's pull them out in their groups. Red, red, green, green, blue, blue. What's the probability of having this happen? Well, the red, there are five red out of 10 marbles. So the probability for each of these is a half. This is a half. Now for the greens, there are two greens out of the 10, so there's a factor of one fifth for each of those. And then for the blue, there's three blues out of the 10, so there's a factor of three tenths for each of those. And you know, if we rearrange these marbles, we're still gonna have two factors of a half two factors of one-fifth, and two factors of three-tenths for each possible order of two reds, two greens, two blues. So all we have to figure out now is we take this probability and we multiply by the number of ways we can arrange two reds, two greens, two blues. It's a lot like that previous problem. But now I have six balls and three colors, and I mean, we could start listing them out and go red, red, green, green, blue, blue, red, red, green, blue, green, blue, red, red, green, blue. That could take forever. Um, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, now, when I have a complicated problem like this, one thing I like to do is think of a simpler version of the same problem and think about how to solve that in a smart way. And then maybe I can use that to solve this. And we have a simpler version of this problem. The problem we just did. Let's go back to this one. Let's go back to this problem. And I want to think again about this problem here where we were putting in two whites and three reds. Well, you know, instead of making them all the same, let's imagine what would happen if the balls were different. If the balls were different, two white balls that are different sizes, and then three red balls that are different sizes. Now, how many orders can we do this in? Well, here, the balls are all different. There are five different balls. There are five choices for which ball we put first, four for the second, three for the third, and so on. We know how to handle this. There are five factorial orders of these. But, of course, here in the real world, the balls are identical. We're, we're, we're looking at just this sequence here, two whites, and then three reds. And 
And this is the sequence we're thinking of in the problem because all, of the, all the white balls are the same, all the red balls are the same in the problem. If we think of them as different, we have this up here. Now up here, if we swap these two, we get a different sequence up here. But this is still the same thing as this down here. Two whites, three reds. So when we count the total number of ways to have two whites and three reds, when all the whites are the same and all the reds are the same, we have to count this configuration as the same as this one. So our five factorial, though, is going to count those two as two different configurations. So this five factorial is going to count every configuration twice. Once for when the white balls are like that, once for when the white balls are like that, but those two are actually the same white, white, red, red, red. So to fix that, we have to divide by two. And that accounts for the fact that the white balls are actually the same. We want to count this sequence of white, white, red, red, red. We want to count that just once. Up here, when we think of the white balls as different, we're going to get it twice, once for each of those orders. But there's another problem. We can also reorder these red balls. We get this sequence with our 5 factorial, but we also get this one. And that 5 factorial counts these two as different. Also gets this one. But if we think of all the red balls as the same and all the white balls as the same, both of those, when we're rearranging the red ones, it's still just two whites, then three reds. So how are we going to fix that? We have to think about the number of ways we can reorder these three red balls. And there are three factorial ways I can rearrange these red balls. So I have to fix that by dividing by 3 factorial, because this 5 factorial is going to count each one of those as different. Each one of those 3 factorial ways to rearrange those 3 red balls, it's going to count those as different. But if all we care about is the color, they're all the same. There's just 3 reds there at the end. So I fix that by dividing by 3 factorial. And if we computed that, 5 factorial is 120. You divide by 2, you get 60. You divide by 3 factorial, which is 6, you get 10. 10, which is what we got when we just counted them out. Now, for those of you who are familiar with binomial coefficients, combinations, permutations, you might have thought about this even faster. You might have thought about this as just, well, I've got five blanks. I've got to choose two of them to put the white balls in. There's five choose two ways to do that. Now, if you have no idea what that is, go to your teacher and say, hey, I want to learn the cool stuff because that's some cool stuff. But now, now we have a strategy for that other problem. We went back to the simpler problem. We found a better way to do it. Let's go back here and tackle this. Here, if we thought of all the balls as different, what we're trying to do here is count the number of different ways, number of different orders we can have. Two reds, two greens, two blues. If we think of them all as different, well, that gives us a six factorial. But we have to correct for the fact that there are two reds. These two are identical. There are two greens. There are two blues. And we saw before, the way we corrected for the fact that we have these two whites is we divided by 2. Because this 5 factorial counted this the same as when we flipped those two. Same things going on here. When we start with 6 factorial, we're going to count this. And we're going to count the one where we swap these two red balls. We're going to count those as two different things. We want to think of them as the same. We can't count them as two separate things. So we've got to divide by 2 for the reds and then again divide by another two for the greens, and then divide by another two for the two blues out here. And now this is the probability we want. And now we just have to get organized and compute all of this. So what's a good way to get organized here? All right, well, our six factorial is six times five times four times three times two. And we've got these two threes out here. Now in our denominator, we have a whole mess of twos. We've got five twos, two fives, and oh, this is going to take forever. All right, but we want to stay organized. We've got our three twos here, and I'm going to go ahead and group these. Two and a five is a ten, two and a five is a ten. So I've got a ten, another ten, and then these two more tens. When we stay organized in your computations, you won't make mistakes. This four will cancel with these twos, two twos. We've got this two cancels with this two. Got a 5 and a 6 gives me a 30. It's going to cancel out with a 10 and leave a 3. And now 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is another 9. 9 times 9 is 
81, 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 cubed. That gives us 81 over 1,000. And we're done. Now, for those of you who do know about the cool stuff back here, see if you can come back and think about this problem again and use those binomial coefficients, use those combinations to find another quick solution for finding this number right here. And we're done.